Chosen Vessels, what's the deal? Let's go. Nine evil ways organized stalkers take down the innocent and turn them into targets for their own sick pleasure. Who'd have thought? Number one of the nine evil ways organized stalkers take down the innocent. Disable. Disable. All right. They want to disable you. They want to disable you from being able. They want to disable you from being able. All right. They want to try to cause disease, injury, or accident. If you've seen the, if you've seen that news episode where those people were getting sick, and come to find out, lo and behold, that one of their neighbors was spreading anthrax in front of the door. They used biological warfare, chemical warfare. People were putting anthrax in people's mail and sending it out. Things like that, all right? Only a narcissistic person would do something like that, okay? And a lot of people believe that the people who were sent to were being tracked and they were targeted. All right. So they want to disable you. All right. They want to limit your movements. All right. They want to keep you disabled and they want to limit your movements. They don't want you to be able to function in society like a normal person. So what they'll do is they'll disable you. They'll do things that will keep you not being able to get to where you need to go. If you saw the Truman Show, when he was trying to leave the island, they would do things to get in his way to try to prevent that. And I know this isn't a movie, it's real life, but when you're trying to get away from a bad situation, all right, people who are evil are going to try to disable you. They're going to make you think that you don't have any place to go. They're going to try to possibly even stop you from having any place to go, create certain scenarios all right some people play sick when people try to leave and get away from a lot of damaging situations people will follow you in certain situations and try to find out where you're going so that way you 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 you, you aren't able to get away from them it's like you're, you're never going to get away from this person They want to be like a Jeepers Creeper or a a Jason, a a, a Freddy versus Jason kind of thing or a, a, a horror movie character. They want to try to disable you. All right, a person that's disabled, they can't go too far. They can't go anywhere. All right. And that's what they want to do. They want to try to disable you. And I know there are people who are disabled that get around pretty well. But for the sake of this video, I'm not talking about that type of disabled but they want to try to limit a person's movements. They want to try to stop you from being able to complete your activities. All right. They want to, they want to make your senses not work by you being so stretched out that you you know, you think you're seeing things. They want to try to disable you and drive you insane. All right. So they're going to try to disable you any kind of way they can, any kind of way they can disable you or limit you. All right. Uh, Some people, they want to try to limit you from getting things done. All right. People will do things that they they're watching your routine and they know you do a certain thing every day at a certain time because you're a creature of habit. This is why you have to switch things up, because there are people out here that want to get in the way. All right. That's what disabling is. They want to try to get in the way. All right. You know how you need to go to the store before you go to work and people, yo, people are sick. That's one thing I notice. If you're a TI, you'll notice that people will go to certain places after you, once you start to pick up a routine, once they start to pick up on what you're doing. There was this one place I would go to, I'd have a routine and I would go to this place before I had work. I'd try to go there, gather my stuff, get my stuff, go take a nap and then get dressed and go to work. And where I lived at was right by this place, this store I would go to. But eventually it started to become crowded around the time when I would go to the store and try to take care of my business. And when I would do that, I would notice that 
the people who were standing in line would have conversations about being in a rush, having to go somewhere, they're not being held up, they have nothing but time, they've got all day, they're, there's nothing special or important they need to go do. And it just, it felt like the things that they were saying were aimed and directed at me, all right? So they want to try to disable you, all right? They want to try to make things difficult, all right? Limit you, not have you be able to run things smoothly like you would like, all right? So they will try to disable you. That is the one evil way organized stalkers take down the innocent, all right? Damage. Let's talk about it, all right? They will try to damage your property. If any of you have had break-ins, if any of you have walked in your home and noticed that things were out of place or moved to places that they shouldn't be, if any of you have noticed your property being damaged and you know that it does something doesn't feel right and you know that you either locked this before you left, all right, there's been, there's been plenty of accounts where I stayed at certain rooms and I, I, like, I'm a creature of habit, just like you're a creature of habit. You know if you lock your door when you're going somewhere, who leaves their door open? All right, you always know to turn around and to double check and to make sure that you close your door. And I advise you to always turn around and double check and see and make sure that your door is closed. Always make sure you close your door. Um, and if you have to, if the, if the stalking where you're at is really that bad and you know you can't trust the people that you're around, your senses are indicating to you that these people are not trustworthy and they're not good people, you may even have to pull out your camera phone and take a picture of your door before you leave because what they'll like to do is they'll like to go into your place and damage your property or they might move things around. They might possibly, you know, be so sick to where they might try to do something to your food. Always make sure your door is closed. Keep your stuff sealed. If it's that bad, just keep your stuff closed. Don't open it. All right. Don't eat too much where you stay at. Budget your money to where you can go out and have something fresh and have something that doesn't have like doesn't have to stay in the area where you're at because these people might be so sick to where they might try to taint or damage your goods because they're damaged goods. Right. So I've had people, I've had pe places where I've stayed and where I know that I closed my door and I know that I locked my door and I, and only to come back and the door just push right open or the door be wide open. And they do that. They may not even go in and touch your stuff, but what they're damaging your, your sense of, of, of security, they're damaging your sense of peace. All right. They're, they're damaging your sense of, of, um, peace of mind by, going into your things and making you feel unsafe because you don't know if somebody's going to be going in your room or your home or your car touching your things and we pray against these things and and god forbid they happen but some of us have already experienced these things some of us know these things to be true and they've happened and we wish we had a camera in our room because we would have actually probably caught the perpetrator red-handed right right in the in, in the act all right instead of them getting away scot-free all right, so you'll notice that they will, you'll lock your door and they'll um, try to play with your mind. And it's a form of gaslighting because you know you locked your door. You know you don't trust those people. As You know you don't trust those people far farther than you could throw them. All right, you don't trust them at all. All right, so you know to keep your stuff locked. You know that you, you triple check it before you leave. Lock it, check to see if the thing is locked and you probably end up locking it again and checking it one more time. But some of us, we, we have our routines down to the point to where we always check and we make that a pattern and we make that our routine to always check. All right. Never be in a rush to the point to where, you know what, you just got to go. Even if you got to be late, make sure your stuff is locked and your items are secure. All right. Because you never know what these demons are up to, even even if it's them not damaging your things and just trying to damage your sense of peace and security by making you think that your stuff is unlocked. Or somebody went and and went in your room and touched your stuff. Just that thought alone is enough to make some people freak out because that's that's weird enough activity already. And these people know what they're doing. And some of them, some of them 
uh, 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 will lie to, well, not some of them, but what they'll do is they'll, they'll lie to your face. They know that they're doing this and they know they're playing a, a evil, wicked game. But instead of uh, damage your, like not damage your property or going to your place, some of them will just damage your things. Like I had a bike and my bike was damaged. I was riding home uh, from work and the handlebars just came smooth off of the rest of the bike. Like the part that holds the wheel in place, that part just separated out of all the, the times that I rode my bike home. And it was fine going to work. But when I got to that job, somebody had took my bike apart. And I didn't know until I got home. And there were other times where I had my bike and the tire was flat. So it's like people will, they'll try to damage your property. And they do that to disable you as well. They don't want you to get to where you need to go. All right. Some of them see that you're already uh, uh, hustling and you're already making the best out of a bad situation. Some of them want to see you stuck in the way in, 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 in the situation and in the position that you're already in. All right. Which is a, which is very evil All right, to try to damage somebody's property. And I could have got hurt. You know, God forbid, God's always with me and I'm always praying and always thanking that I make it to my destination and I get back peacefully and, and safe and sound. And, and I advise you to do the same thing because there are people out here that do wicked stuff. And I believe it's just my own personal belief that somebody tampered with my belongings, somebody tampered with my things, and they took that bike apart because they, they wanted to see something happen to me. And by the grace of God, it didn't. All right. So people will damage your things. Always check your things. Always, you know, if you feel that you're being watched or followed or if you, you, you feel uneasy about people, park near no one. All right. So that way, if somebody has to go all the way out of the way to go near your vehicle, they'll be caught on camera. All right, so don't park near people. Make sure your car is always locked. All right, these people love to break into cars. They love to damage things that don't belong to them. They want people to feel like they have no sense of security and that they're not safe. Always make sure your things are locked. Triple check, lock, 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 lock. Locks at work, locks at the gym, locks at your home, locks in your office, locks on your car. Whatever you lock, lock it. Make sure it's locked. Lock your bike up. All right, some, some of these people will watch you to the point to where they don't even need a bike, but they'll take it. Probably got three cars. They just don't want to see you get around. All right, people are weird and they're strange, and you don't know what their next move just might be. All right, disturb. Let's, 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 let's uh, have this one. Let's, let's discuss this one. All right, they like to disturb you. All right, these people will do anything to try to, to get a, a, a reaction out of you. Their main thing is, is disturbing your peace. All right. They can tell what type of person you are by how much they study and watch you. And if you're a person that likes peace and quiet, you're going to have to get some noise cancellation headphones. All right. Because what they're going to try to do is they will make noise and, and be loud and overpower your, your, your silence or overpower what it is you're doing, the show you're watching, the movie you're watching. Um, anything to try to disrupt your peace, anything to try to get your focus on to them, anything to get you thinking about them <clears throat> or having you feed them your mental energy. That's what it's really all about. They're psychic vampires and they want you to feed them your mental energy. I, like, I, I, I've been in rooms and stayed places where people would live on a whole other side of the building, but be right in front of my door being loud and talking. And it's like you ask them to stop. They don't do anything. You go to the person who owns the place. They say they'll say something to them. And then the next time you hear something loud, now it's the person you said something to who owns the place. And it's the person trying to talk real loud that was originally bothering you in the first place. So sometimes when you go to get help, like the help is is in on it the help is in on it sometimes when you go to get help the help won't like you either all right so these people will disturb you and they will try to make things as hard for you to relax like if you get off work they'll slam doors when they know you're asleep all right they'll blast their music real loud i stayed at this one place and the people knew that i was quiet and it was loud on purpose like they, they knew that I was a peaceful, quiet person. I was in there by myself, staying by myself, didn't have a, a whole bunch of ratchetness uh, uh, going on in my place. But they said, you know what? We got enough ratchetness to share with you. So they let me have some of their ratchetness and I, I got a dose of it each and every day. All right. I had to turn my TV up so loud to not be be bothered by these folks. All right. I, I turned the volume all the way up. I'm talking about I left that TV on even when it was quiet over there. 
just just to send a message. And they they know what type of person that they were being because they they take pride in how ratchet and how much of a, a piece of trash that they can be. All right, and that's why it's evil. What they're doing is aimed at people, negative uh, actions aimed at people to to get a response, right? And they do this for their own sick pleasure. These people are they sick, boss? They sick. All right, so they'll they'll um disturb your peace some of you have like some of you experience this on an extreme level all right uh I've, I've been harassed by people who drive mail cars because it, like these are all the things i experienced as a pedestrian you know if i had a vehicle it probably would have been a little different but the way god works is he wanted me to be able to speak to uh, uh audience that's going through these specific things sometimes god has you go through specific things so that way he could turn you into what he wants you to be so whatever God wants you to be, whatever you're going through, it could be uh, it could be for your good purposes. All right, they meant it to you for bad, but God meant it to you for good. All right, so a lot of these people, they mean these things to you for bad, but God meant it to you for good. All right, you see how I'm using my experiences to to uh, make a difference and to make a change as best as I can. You know, it might be might be my might not be as monumental as one might think or one might say, but hey, that's cool with me. Whether it's a big impact or a little impact, I'm cool with it. All right. Um, they want to disturb. All right. Um, like the, like they were so loud. And I mean, it was it was just ha- so hard to deal with that. I would just go other places. And when they weren't I, I they like they stalked me and I stalked their routine when when they when they would leave, I would do my videos. I would get some rest. I would get some peace. So what you're going to have to do is when like try to get a different schedule as this person. If you could work in the afternoon, if you could work nights, whatever opposite of what they do. If you, if you have to stay there or if it's cost efficient for wherever you're living, see if you could either get a different job, see if you can get a different shift, whatever this person's routine is, see if you can get the opposite of their routine. So that way you can um, that way you can make it work for you while they're going to sleep, while they're going to sleep, you're at work while they're sleeping. I mean, while while they're going to work, you're asleep. So when they come home and they slam doors and they do all this loud bullcrap behavior or they blast their music across the street or they let their horn go a million times or whatever they noise they make lawnmower reef blower whatever they do might be some loud noisy neighbors might have a dog just bark bark barking when they come home see if you can switch your routine up so that way you'll you, like you won't be affected by their bs all right and that's that's how people try to disturb you all right demoralize all right they're gonna try to demoralize you all right um they have no morals. They don't have any morals at all. All right. They're going to want to make you throw your morals in the trash. And what they do to demoralize you is they is, is, is just disrespect. All right. They will try to disrespect you in ways where it's very upsetting and it's frustrating. All right. They will demoralize you. And how they do that is they just want to cause havoc in your life. Right. So they'll try to make you lose confidence in yourself. They don't want you to be strong enough to get through what they're putting you through. And they don't want you to think that you're going to make it because it's a lot that a person goes through when they're dealing with this. They have to deal with a whole new, a whole new uh, version of themselves. So whatever they're taking you through, they don't want you to be able to get your way out of it. They don't want you. They don't want you to be able to see a way out of it, or or, or be able to see yourself overcoming it. it. It's something that is meant to make you destroy yourself. It's something meant to make you take yourself out, and that's their that's their aim. Their aim is to try and make a person get rid of themselves. So they will try to demoralize you. Your your character is probably too strong for them, and you probably have. A high level of self-esteem all right you're probably a threat to them and when you're confident when you're a confident person you're going to naturally draw people to you and when you naturally draw people to you you draw attention so this is why as someone that draws people to them the way they do things are, are very discreet it's discreet to the point to where they don't want you to know they don't want you to be able to see it they don't want you to be able to tell and that's how 
they're going to make you lose confidence because if, if, if it's something that nobody can see and only you can see, that'll make a person lose confidence real quick. It makes a person think that, well, I mean, how am I going to get out of this if no one else can see it, if it's to the point to where I'm the only one that notices, right? So they try to make a person lose confidence that way, and they'll try to make you lose hope that way, all right? That's what they try to do. They don't want you to have hope. They don't want you to uh, uh, have a, a bright idea about this situation. They don't want you to have confidence in this situation. It's not something that they want you to, to think that is going to turn out well for you. And if they can get you to start thinking negatively, they can start to, to get you to down spiral. They can start to get you to destroy yourself with your own thoughts. And that's the whole name of the game is to try to get you to lose hope to the point to where you're stuck. All right. So that is number four. All right. They want to try to demoralize you. They're also going to try to defame you. All right. They want to defame you. They want your character destroyed. They want your character assassinated. They want other people to look at you as a bad person. It, they may even go as far as making up a lie and saying that you did something that you didn't do. All right. So if they can defame you, then who's going to listen to you? If they could defame you, who's going to pay attention to what you have to say? What you have to say is going to become not important. It's going to become null and void. It's going to, no, no one's going to want to listen to your side of the story. And they'll possibly even see you as somebody with an issue, like a, a mental issue. So that that's what they want you to lose. That's why they want you to lose hope as well. All right. So they'll demoralize you because they want you to lose hope. And they want you to, the hell is on my head. All right, I thought a bee just landed on my stuff. All right, yo, being out here in nature, it's like that. Um, <laughs> yo, um, they'll try to basically get you to, to give in to what they're doing. All right, and, and, and give in by thinking that there's nothing that you can do. And give in by thinking that all is lost. And that you're just going to be someone who is harassed and stalked until the rest for the rest of their life all right they don't want you to see any positives in this situation it's real easy for people to lose hope in a situation like that all right that's why they will try to demoralize you and defame you as well your character is probably one of the most prized possessions that a person has is their character the type of person that you are says a lot about you and that's what they want to change. They know that you're an upstanding citizen. They know that you're a good person and people take to you. People view you a specific way. They want to try to change that, turn that around, and get people to view you the way that they want people to view you. They want people to see you just like they're viewed as either a nobody or a sinister, satanic individual. And these people are extremely sinister and extremely satanic. All right, so... They will try to defame you. Maybe you're working towards becoming a public figure. Maybe you're working towards being an influencer. Maybe you're working towards starting a business for yourself. They will try to defame you. All right. They'll try to say you do bad business. They'll lie on your name, say your products aren't good. All right. They'll make up all kinds of lies and, and try to say whatever they can or do whatever they can to get people to view you the opposite way. Maybe you have a business in the community and you're doing something to help people. They're going to try to twist that around and make it seem like you might be trying to hurt people. Anything they can do, right, to defame you. Maybe your, maybe your, um, your job requires you to be uh, a certain type of person where people are looking at you. Y'all laughing at my face over them bugs, huh? All right, um, maybe your job requires you to be a certain type of person. They'll have people who will, you know, people who will try to get you caught up in certain things, or they'll have people try to see if you're doing some kind of wrong. All right, so that's why a lot of people will watch you too to see if, if you're doing anything you're not supposed to do. But odds are you're not doing anything that anybody would have to worry about anyway. So a lot of these people will defame you. If they can't find anything, they'll make things up. So a lot of people will make things up on you. They'll have negative things to say like, oh, well, you know, they're this kind of person. They're that kind of person. And people will believe that, go with it, spread it, and, and get the rumor going. All right, so that's another way that's uh, uh, probable. What number are we on now? Uh, five. All right, that is one of the five ways. 
all right, that people will try to uh, to to take down the innocent. All right, so number six, they want to try to defile you. All right, and what they'll do by that is maybe it's your your finances. All right, maybe they'll try to come at your finances some kind of way. Maybe. So yes, defile. You have a clean spirit, and they're going to try to turn it into something unclean. All right, you probably make sure that you're the type of person that leaves a good impact on people, that lives that leaves uh, people with a, a, a good feeling of you, a good memory of you. And what they want to do is they want to try to defile you as far as your energy, as far as the type of person that you are, all right? The type of energy that you have, you have a good vibe, you have a good spirit. They want to do things to try to make you retaliate. And that's how a lot of people end up defiling themselves. All right, that's how a lot of people become unclean because once you step into the game in the realms of retaliation, that's these people's ballpark. All right, you're you're walking into their theme park. I remember that song from uh, I Want This If I Ever, man. They said Lil Wayne was like, this is my theme park. Like, this, like when you retaliate to these people, it's their theme park. They know all the games to play. All right, they know how to get you at this point. When you retaliate, you're basically walking into traps. All right, you're, you're walking into traps. You're setting yourself up. You're putting yourself in position to get got by the enemy. So you don't want to defile yourself. Your energy is good. Your heart is, is good. Your energy is clean. You know, you got a clean heart. You got a, a, a clean spirit, a righteous spirit, a clean heart, a new mind. They want to try to defile you. All right, you're going to have to say thank you, God, for a righteous spirit, a clean heart, and a new mind. Thank you, God, for a new mind, a clean heart, and a righteous spirit. Lord, create a new heart in me. Lord, create a clean heart in me. All right, because they want to try to turn you into this upset, uh, uh, ravaged, savage, you know, type of person that is cutthroat. All right, they want to try to make you a cutthroat person that ends up being defiled because they don't care about society anymore. All right. They want you to have rep recognize your situation as so tough and, and that you have so many, many bad situations happen and that you're just not getting a break to where now you're going around, taking it out on people, being, being rude to people, having an attitude towards people. All right. And also not only that, but retaliating, all right, doing tit for tat, wasting your time instead of focusing on yourself and getting over these people, now you're you're spending your waking hours trying to get them back, thinking of, of ways to try to uh, uh, harm them or hurt them or, or do what they did to you to them. All right, and that takes time off your life. That will definitely defile your spirit. You go from being a good person to being a bad person, all right? That will defile your spirit quicker than you could blink. And, and that's the one thing that they take pride in is, is pure evil. They want to try to take a good, clean person and try to defile that person's spirit by making that person uh, react and retaliate. All right, some people have, have done the unthinkable to some of these people, and now they're behind bars all because they retaliated. And that is something that they want. They want you to have some type of extreme reaction to where now, you, don't, you instead of taking the high road, you will finally give in and retaliate to all the pressure that they put you under. And when people explode from pressure, it's because their spirit has been defiled. They haven't allowed themselves to reclaim peace. They haven't calmed themselves down. They may not know how to deal with this type of behavior. Maybe they're not dealing it in a way to where they're letting God handle it. So, you know, they, they may be going gung-ho. You know, they, they, they may go... Um, uh, Chinese Vietnamese bomber on them, suicide bomber on them. All right. So some people, they get tired and this is why, this is why they want you to give up hope. This is why they want to try to demoralize you as well. They want you to give up hope, throw in a towel and go on a shooting spree all right? or, or strap a bomb to you yourself and go blow something up. And you know, God forbid, but those things actually happen when people become defiled and they've had enough. All right, so they want you to become defiled to the point to where you're like, yo, you know what? I had enough. I'm not playing with you. Uh, the type of person that you're being to me, the type of things that you're you're, you're doing to to try to get this reaction out of me, you're trying to turn me into you. You want me to retaliate so that way I my spirit becomes corrupt and I end up giving into hate and wickedness and I end up giving into my demons and becoming a demon and instead of being a good person end up turning into a wicked one.
and, and going out and retaliating to people instead of letting God handle it. So don't let them destroy you that way. Don't let them take over your spirit and mess your life up that way by defiling your spirit and turning you into someone that retaliates because that retaliation is going to get you and it's going to cause more harm to you. Whatever you do to them is still going to cause more harm to you. All right, it's it's going to cause you more bad than good. All right, so that was, I believe that was number, where are we at? We're at defile, all right? Um, they're going to want to defame you, all right? I believe, yeah, I did defame, I did defile. Now we're at disrupt, all right? They want to disrupt your plans. This is what happens at, at, at work for a lot of you guys, all right? This is what happens at work to, to a lot of uh, people. They, they want to disrupt you. You know, you're working for this new promotion. You're saving up for a car. You're saving up for a home. A lot of these people can't save money. A lot of people at jobs, they cannot save money. They are not good with their money. All right, they're not good with their finances. They don't know how to take care of themselves. The only way they're able to stay afloat is by you know, being evil and making sure that they're the one that gets the hours because of all the people that they're putting pressure on and all the people that they're stressing out and making seem like they're not normal people. If, if, if there's not enough hours and say you needed more hours, and say you had the opportunity to stress someone out or get someone fired, so that way you could take on some extra work and get an extra extra, uh, raise in your pay, you know, who knows what a person might do. But that's the type of things that they're into. All right, they will try to disrupt your plans. They know that you're taking public transit to work. They know that you may be catching an Uber to work. They know you may be catching a taxi, riding a bike, walking, you know, and, and you don't want to see somebody that is struggling to get to where they need to get advance. You don't want to see them. Uh, you don't want to see this person show some growth. You don't want to see this person work towards something that everyone has and everyone needs. But some people, you're already too good for them. Some people, you're already better than them. And to see you live a normal life, see you drive a car, see you live in a home, to see you maintain your jobs, it's some of this, it, it would literally kill some of these people. They would die rather than to wake up and have to go back and see a happy person like yourself enjoy themselves and win and get ahead. So just, like, just like how they want you to take yourself out, if they have to see you succeed and live a life of, of wealth and health, then they're going to take themselves out. So instead of taking themselves out, what they do is they take out how they feel on you. That's why you can't, that's why they, you, you feel like they don't want you around. And even though they want, even though they don't want you around, you're going to stay there anyway. You're going to do what you need to do anyway. All right. You're not going to let them stop you, but that's why they have to slander. That's why they'll go through any type of extent because they can't stand to see you prosper. All right, some of some of you some of you prospering is li- is literally making these people want to claw their eyes out and to and, and dig their eyes out and be, possibly even pull their eyes out, you know, eyes bleeding and everything. Some of these people will go blind before they see you uh, uh, get ahead of them, or before some of these people will go blind before they want to see you shine. And we're just keeping it real. All right, um, we're just keeping it a buck. So, you know, a lot of these people want to disrupt your plans. They don't see you have good things going for you. You know, um, they know that it's something that you want to do with your life. You know, it doesn't take a rocket science to see someone's trying to improve their situation. When they when they see someone on the bottom and they see someone working real hard, they know what a person is working for. They'll let they'll let anybody else do it. But some of us, we know that we can't be around people and work. Because when, when we're in their presence and we try to work, it's going to be something that they try to do to make that not be able to happen. And some of us, our energy is just, just so strong that we can't be around people. And we have, to ha- we have to create businesses for ourselves. We have to get jobs where we're away from people because people will try to disrupt our plans because they just can't simply stand to see us do well. <laughs> yeah, you know, and some people have so much hate in their heart that they really, it really burns them up. It really kills them and it really hurts them to see you win. All right. They're hurt. They're in their feelings over your success. And that's something that you cannot control, but you can control your own actions in the matter. Starting a business, educating yourself financially, uh, getting some type of uh, uh, financial education, So that way, when they try to disrupt your plans, they won't be able to. All right. And number eight, the eighth evil thing that they're going to try to do is destroy you. 
They want people to be so stressed out that they will take themselves out, that they'll either drink themselves to death. All right. Some people try to escape the negative things that, you know, the evil brings along. All right. Some people try to escape the headaches. Some people try to escape the stress with unhealthy forms and unhealthy ways of taking their mind off of it. I suggest you go to the gym. Don't allow these people to make you destroy yourself with some type of substance because somebody is playing with you. Some people will, you know, they'll they'll try to self-medicate or some people, like I said, they'll they'll try to drink their way out of this situation. There's there's nothing you can take or put in your body or ingest that's going to make this stuff go away. I just want you to know that prayer will help because it's going to bring you peace and it's going to stop the, the, the negative energy coming from these people when they're trying to make it enter into your spirit. All right, because it's one thing that it, 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 they're, they're going to try to do is they're going to try to frustrate you and get you upset. That's the main thing. I'm Like they feed off of negative energy. When you get angry, you yell or you slam the door or you bang your fist on the table. They're like that spirit is feeding off of that energy. All right. So they will try to destroy you by making you upset and causing you to destroy yourself. All right. Whether you are, you know, not getting enough sleep. All right, some people don't get enough sleep. Some people can't rest. Some people can't find peace. All right, they're, they're stressed. It, they don't know how to release it. They don't know how to get over these kinds of things. They don't know. They may not be the kind of person that can mentally sort these things out. And they know not everybody is at that level to where they can, um, not everybody's at that level to where they can get over things. Not everybody's at that level to where they're not going to let something bother them. Not everybody is at that level to where they know how to just let negative energy just fade away and move on. Not everybody can move on. Some people, they let things bother them. And if they let it, let it bother them, that's their choice. But it's like people have a choice to be bothered by something and to not be bothered by something. But if someone's not on that level, a person trying to destroy you could be very could be a very negative turn of events for a person that doesn't know how to work on their mind or doesn't know how to find peace within themselves. They could end up getting upset and reacting in a way to where now they just ruined something for themselves and now this person got what they wanted. And that's how they destroy you. They destroy you based off of how you handle the situation. So how you handle the situation, being mature, letting go, not allowing them to do what it is they want to do as far as your peace and your anger and your um, how you deal with things is concerned. Because, man, it's like they will cause you to be so mad to where you you like, yo, you won't care. And you don't want to get mad to the point where you don't care. Because once that anger goes down and once you're not upset anymore, then it's a wrap. Whatever you chose to do, you can't reverse it. All right. So where are we at now? That's pretty much it for destroy. Despair. All right. They want you to stay in despair. All right. Despair is when a person is down in the dumps, when a person is depressed, when a person is so negative and they don't see anything good happening anymore. All they can see is the situation that they're in and how it's affecting them. So it's like despair would be giving in. Despair would be down spiraling. Despair would be not having any hope. Despair would be, okay, they're doing this. There's no way out. I just have to deal with it. That's despair. Not accepting it and getting over it, but accepting that there's nothing you can do. And that's what they want a person to feel like. They want you to think there's nothing you can do. And they want you to feel like they have complete power over your life. When a person is stuck in despair, a person wastes time. A person is down. A person is not feeling good. A person is not their normal self. Their energy is going to be way down. And these people, these people are spiritually draining you because they're all you're thinking about and they're on your mind. All right. And like you may deal with these people when you walk outside. You may deal with these people when you're trying to take care of your business, right? They may keep trying to make themselves known and make their presence known to you every every waking moment, you know? Some situations, some people are, are dealing with people like this in their neighborhood and in their environment. All right, they make your daily goings and comings pretty difficult because it's like it's, they constantly are trying to bring you the negative feelings, 
all right? And they want you to stay stuck in that despair. As soon as you feel like, okay, I'm going to have a good day and things are okay, here they come with their behavior. And when you, when you don't know how to deal with it, it's very tough. It, it, it makes a person feel bad. It ruins your day, right? It's like you're giving all your energy to these negative-ass people. And it's... it's Mr. Rooster, it's, it's not the type of situation. Yo, everybody put the roosters in the in the comment section. All right, it's just not the type of situation a person wants to deal with. So that's how they keep people caught in despair. They want you to be depressed and to be woe is me and to just think that your life is over. All right, they want you to think that your life is over. If I went over there and I, I tied a rope around that uh, the beak of that uh, rooster, it wouldn't it would have lesser quality of life. All right, it, it wouldn't be able to move through life like it wanted to. It wouldn't be able to live the life that it it, is, it fully deserves. Same thing with you, and just in a different way with with them playing with your mind and doing all these strange things. It's like they don't want you to be able to live the life you deserve. They don't want you to be able to uh, enjoy your life the way it was meant to be enjoyed. All right, so that was just the nine evil ways organized stalkers take down the innocent and turn them into targets for their own sick pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this video. I did my best. I will see you all in the next one. Peace, love, and light. We out.